morning. Welcome to 99.5 Love FM. Asampaetia. Obayan Safusu or Bunubia one can asam. They mafu to some cacre was a pimmy. Definitely, we have one country, and whether you travel to the ends of the earth, you feel that nostalgia to come back home. And so, definitely, you will come back home. And so, the development of this country really should be a concern to everybody. And that's our conversation for this morning. And Professor Ahaji is with the Settlement Studies of the KNUST. And he wrote this. He's trying to project into the future. And he says, by the year 2060, Ghana's population may be hitting 70 million. If you go by current growth rate of population as, as we are going. And he's asking these questions. That this will have huge socioeconomic implication for the country. And the question to be asked is what will be the standard of living for the anticipated huge population and status of development in the country? Will there still be intermittent power cuts and intermittent water supply? Will there still be street children and homelessness and schools under trees in the midst of abandoned projects? Will there still be high unemployment? And will half of the urban population still be living in slum? And the rate at which slums are growing, I wonder, how it's going to be. Will Accra Kumasi Road still be under perennial construction and remain a single lane? The list could be endless. You can add your own uh, list to it. So the question we have been asking ourselves is that can Ghana ever attain the status of a developed country? Can Ghana ever, ever, per the way we are doing our things, mm. as haphazard as we're doing our things, can Ghana ever attain the, the status of a developed country? I want you to go to Facebook. We are streaming live over there. This conversation is for all of us as a country. Join the discussion. Tell us what you see wrong with our, our way of developing. Can Ghana ever attain the status of a developed country? Add your voice to the comments there. I would like to read it at the at tail end of the show. Prof, good morning. Yeah, good welcome. morning once again. And morning to your listeners. Mm -hmm. It's been some time. Yes, yeah. <laughs> So what, what informed uh, you yeah. trying to yeah. project into the future, yeah. which of course is good? Yeah, that's a very good question. And uh, let me practicalize. You see, I, I, I look at my life, I'm not in my 50s now, mm. so I look at my life over the last 50 years, living around this community. And uh, remember, power cuts, you experience it, mm. water shortage, we experience it. We are still experiencing it. Yeah. And so uh, I ask myself, if all these problems that we have, have lived through, and the interesting thing is that we always heard the, the issue that we are solving the problem. You know, but even though we are solving the problem, the problem is still around with us. Government after government. Government after government. So I think a bit as, uh, just like the question you have just posed, but I, interestingly, I did not even look at whether Ghana would be a developed country. Mm. I was rather looking at whether we, we, we are going to survive. The basics. <laughs> yes, because from the way we are moving, I see that, no, uh, something is wrong here. Mm. But you have, the issue of de developed now came in. So I, it's like, ah, the way we are going, are we ever going to? And then I chance on this population theory by Charles uh, uh, Anthony uh, Giddens, which stems from, I think, UN data, uh, that for every 40 years, 
the world population will increase. And that's what the analysis says. Oh, so now we are 30 million and look at what we are going through. So if the pace that we are developing, which is not that commensurate of our population group, and we, we hit that 60 million, imagine 60 million and Accra Kumasi Road is still single lane. Mm. Hello, what is going to happen to us? You know, so that is what informed me to know, try to think deep and see that, no, if I could put this piece together. And uh, I, I'm happy that it has uh, got it, it to... It caught our attention. Uh, yeah. uh, but yeah. what, uh, you know, we are interested in this because you raise pertinent questions. Yeah. Would there still be intermittent power cuts and water supply? Would there still be street children and homelessness yeah. and schools under trees? Would there still be unemployment? You know, what mm. makes you ask these questions? Yeah, you know... Uh, as you said uh, earlier, we are in a global community and we are, uh, all countries are seeking to develop to the higher level, which is a developed country. Uh, but the interesting thing is that uh, if you look at it from the colonial era, what we went through and now becoming a nation, it looks like we have not been really part of any global agenda for development. And always we are just at the rec receiving end and waiting. Say, for instance, uh, certain certain things that we do in this country, relating to, for instance, you know, where uh, people make a living in their homes, and then fathers, uh, parents, and children work together, is actually called uh, uh, production family, and it was practiced in the 17th century in the UK. So, if you think about it, it means that we are now practicing something. Our economy, some parts of our economy, is actually at 17th century. In the world, and, and they've long gone past us. Long gone, but uh, we, we are still. Yes, we, we came to industrial revolution, mm. the first industrial revolution. We were not part of it. It moved to, and that one was when machines started. We moved to the second mm. industrial revolution, where automation and mass production started. We were not really, although Enkroma uh, 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 tried with factories, we were not really part of it. We have moved to the third industrial revolution. That is where our internet and ICT came in. Mm. What, what is the internet penetration? Okay. Now we have moved to the fourth industrial revolution, which is digitization, uh, artificial intelligence. So you see that with all the levels of global agenda, we are not part of it. You know, And that is why, so for instance, electricity, which is very key for, was very key for the first industrial re uh, revolution, we couldn't and as at now, we have not. So how are you going to move through with electricity from that stage to the second, to the third, and to the fourth, where now things have moved into digitalization and robotics? And, you know, so that is the challenge that we are, uh, uh, we, we are having, uh, which means that uh, we don't really understand our place in the global society as to what we are. It, it looks like... Because we were just, that's my thinking, we were, we were handed over as a country by the colonial masters, and we didn't know what we were supposed to do. So we are just doing anything, you know. You see, because uh, for countries that have something to do, uh, often we say that where well, the West took about 200 years to develop to where they are. Mm. But it's interesting to know that... But, but they knew where they were going. Yes, they knew where they were going. And they had a clear-cut plan. Yes, and right? Soviet Union, when Soviet Union came in those times, and they knew where they were going, they took 30 years to achieve what the West did until this breakup came in. Look at Malaysia. If some people took 200 years, at least others have shown within our generation mm. that you can take 30 to 40 years to get to where you are, mm. you are going. And that's uh, and, and on that case, you know, Malaysia had Vision 2020. With that Vision 2020, they were able to build 800,000 houses. I'm repeating, 800,000 for low-income earners. Take Ghana's Vision 2020 from 1992 to 2020. How many houses did we build? Even the 10,000 or 5,000 that we are playing around, some took about 10 years. The one uh, Professor Kufo started took about more than 10 years. Mm. Just 1,005 houses. Then the rest two, some are finished. They are not occupied. So you cannot be, you cannot be comparing yourself. And, and how affordable are these? Yes, to you cannot be comparing yourself to a country that mm. is, has the, that vision and put up 800,000 houses. And you are playing with uh, 5,000. When you talk about the 1,000 and the 5,000, sometimes I recall and then start laughing. 
Is that serious? Are they kidding us? You know, that is the situation. Uh, I, I, I once uh, listened to the voice of the leader of uh, Dubai. Yeah. And he said that they had a projection. And yeah. he, ha he, he had this dream yeah. that he doesn't want his people to suffer. He wants the, yeah. his people to enjoy yeah. um, all the things that the well-developed countries are enjoying. Yeah. And the interviewer asked him, yeah. um, did you have a timeline? He said, yes. Yeah. When, when, at to what time did you want your people yeah. to enjoy all this? He said, now. Yeah. Yes. You see. You see. So the good thing now is that. Do we have a clear cut plan on how? Where I know we used, to, we used to talk about this national plan, national plan. Yeah. And some people say we don't have it. But actually, the, the NDPC, uh, if you go to their website, they have developed Ghana at 100 years. And in fact, I have to be very honest, when I was writing the article, I did not bother a bit, although I talked about the, the uh, NDPC in the report. You know, Ghana will be 100 years in the year 2057. Mm. It's just three years away from the projection that I'm making. And they are anticipating that Ghana will be a developed country with GDP per capita of 50,000 US dollars. Do you know what that means? That's using uh, uh, purchasing power parity. The UK, the same size as Ghana, has a population now of 64 million. Mm. Their GDP per capita now is $46,000. So Ghana is saying that by the year 2057, it wants to be in the League of Nations like UK. Y you get it. Mm. And that's why I'm asking these questions. So if the population gets there, with the way we are we are building the economy with the slow pace and you know political uh, uh, insincerity here and there and bigotry with projects abandoned some completed and when we start a project a project that should take six months can take 10 years to complete is that what you are going to use to get to a developed country status to be at the status of uk uk has got about 164 public universities mm. okay now how many do you have here you have the main ones about 12. If you add the technical universities, you are getting to about, let's say, 30. You know, now with all this congestion, you know, going on, uh, if you get to 60 million people, how many public universities are we going to have to be able to get the, the kind of space where there will be no congestion in mm. classrooms? You know, these are all issues that, as a country, we need to focus our mind and it's good that now the document is even out you know but uh, looking at how even we have solved problems in the past we claim we were solving legacy pro uh, problems power cars it has never been solved we said we were water shortage when i was growing young there was always uh, water still going on so what is going to happen is it going to it's continue still a political uh, debate when we say that we solved power crisis um, do you really believe that we solve power crisis because we keep coming back to the same problem intermittent power cuts and uh, when you say doom so they say no this one is not doom so this is on the side uh, these are just intermittent power <laughs> cuts and all that i think if if, uh, if it might be true that uh, currently we are not in the same situation some maybe years back but if you were to record all the power cuts that you are having mm -hmm. you realize that maybe within the week you are experiencing... Uh, so we've seen some improvement. Well, but yes. We've seen some improvement. improvement. What but would be then, the ideal situation? Well, because it, what, for, I've, what, have I, what I've experienced before... Ahead. What I've experienced before... Mm. I lived in the UK for five years. I didn't see power cut until I came back to Ghana. You know, and uh, people have lived there 10 years. <laughs> Unless there's a, a, a force majeure or, or an issue with uh, uh, the weather... Power is not going on. So if you say you want to get to a developed country by the year 2057, mm. then that is what you are saying. So what should we have been doing right now in the in, in the area of energy, solving our energy problem, if we want to get there by, by that stipulated time? Well, I presume that uh, the, 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 the authorities should know what mm. they have to do. My, my worry is that uh, we always get the assurance that, for instance, uh, the utility services, mm. They always come and ask for money. And when they ask for money, what do they say? A, B, C, D. And when you get the money, you are going to do what? You are going to address it. But I, and I'm telling you that I've lived through 50 years. I've seen those things, uh, and I'm still seeing it. 
and uh, maybe 2057, I will not be available to see the 100 years. Mm. But if it's going to continue, then, uh, and also because the population is growing and the infrastructure is not keeping pace, then it means that things are rather going to get worse, 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 worse. Because I can give you an example. I lived uh, on a tech campus when I was growing up. Tech junction, as I said some time ago, was not a market. You know, now it's a huge market, and sometimes when you pass there and you observe, you find out that unless you don't know the area very well, those who know the area will know that most of the people who are selling there are coming from the community. And they turn their place to a market. Mm. And that is that has happened within my generation, mm. which is the 40 years. I'll come to who we are as a people, what yeah. that yeah. says uh, about yeah. us as a people, yeah. and ask you some questions there. There is a research uh, yeah. uh, or rating by one professor hosted. Okay. And there are uh, some interesting. Hosted. Hosted. Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. There are some interesting, yeah. you know, ratings he yeah. gives to Ghana in yeah. certain dimensions. Yeah. I'll take you through that. But yeah. I want to take you to your own article again. Yeah. Uh, the last but one paragraph. You yeah. say that if you should ask me to make a prediction of what will happen by the year 2060, if yeah. the status quo should remain, yeah. I will say that by 2060, we may have to contend to deal with acute forms of slums, yeah. more disturbing intermittent water supply, yeah. very disruptive power cuts, yeah. excessively high unemployment, yeah. etc. Yeah. Uh, this is you being pessimistic. Yes, you know, looking Why? at, so, look, I'm, I'm looking at, if for example, you, 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 you live in a country where it can take you 10 years to build 1,500 houses. Uh, are, you, are you getting me? Mm. Uh, 1,500 houses, it takes you 10 years when others are building 800,000. You know, if you live in a country where for 40 years plus, you say you are uh, solving an electricity problem and it is still there. You know, if you live in a country where uh, Accra Kumasi Road, single lane, 15 years, it is still single lane. You know, those are the things that uh, I, I look at and see that no, in terms of infrastructure, for us to meet where we want to go to, mm. we are not keeping that pace. And if you look at our attitude towards the way we handle some of them too, uh, then you, you, you get the impression that we don't know where we want to get to. So for instance, are we confused? If you look at the, 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 the document by the NDPC, they talk about clean energy and affordability, affordable uh, and affordable uh, houses and uh, clean energy. How can you be talking about clean energy? And interesting enough, that document is supposed to take effect from 2021. So it means that our governments are supposed to be relying on that document to get us to where. So if you talk about clean energy, at the same time, you are installing air conditioners anyhow to the national grid. Is that clean energy? And where is the policy document now that uh, you, you can install AC, but if you want to install an AC, this, you must do A, B, C. Mm. Is, that, is that okay? You don't, you don't, you don't have anything. You, if you walk around, any, anybody can fix AC anywhere. Mm. You know, but you are saying clean energy. You, you, you get me? So these are some of the things that uh, uh, for somebody who is into settlement and also uh, take a look to observe things, uh, it's, it's, it's worrying and and uh, the interesting also aspect is that uh, I think for guys or those who are below 35 years and the, uh, I think the population data even shows that about 52 percent uh, they are the people who are going to celebrate the 100 years mm. or they will be well, if you are lucky they will be alive by it's not the time for them to be asking their government's questions on how they are going to get to that 2057 where Ghana will be a developed country. But are the people interested in asking those questions? I see a people that is divided on political lines and do not really have any nationalistic feeling. Yes, that is what uh, uh, we, we all need to work on. I, I would say maybe people will say we are doing our best, but if we want to, and the question you pose, unless we want to remain a developing country forever, mm then I think things must change. Okay. And yeah. that brings me to the question, um, the findings made by Professor Hofstede. Yeah. Um, he studied uh, people who worked for IBM in more than 50 countries. Yes. Initially, he identified four dimensions that could distinguish one's culture from another. Yeah. Later, he added 
uh, the fifth and sixth yeah. dimensions yeah. in cooperation with uh, Dr. Bond yeah. and Michael Menkov. Yeah. And these are the yeah. dimensions. Yeah. Power distance. Yes, power distance index. Yeah. Individualism yeah. versus collectivism. Yeah. Um, I'll focus on the power distance, yeah. another one. Let me go to the how he rated Ghana in okay. certain areas, in yeah. all these areas. Yeah. When you go to the chart, yeah. On power distance, he rated us 80. Yeah. And I'll tell you what it is. Yeah. Okay. So he says that we have so much respect mm. uh, for authority, yeah. uh, the hier hierarchical yeah. order. Yeah. And so uh, we want to, you know, uh, with recourse to authority yeah. all the time. Now, this is what he. Uh, it says, is that Ghana scores high on this dimension, score of 80, yeah. which means that people are set a hierarchical order yeah. in which everybody has a place and which needs no further justification. Yeah. Hierarchy in an organization is seen as reflecting inherent inequalities. Yeah. Yeah. I'm familiar, I'm, I'm familiar with a Hofstede, just mm -hmm. that uh, I didn't do a, a recap. What does it say about so us? What is, as what people trying to say is that uh, our we, we, in our uh, working environment and also our lifestyle, we tend to accept inequalities. Mm. So we don't demand. You see, uh, you work in an office, and although we say you have to give uh, respect to each other, which is fine, but it's like we tend to worship to the extent that mm. even if something is wrong and uh, it's something you have to devo demand equality. We don't. We, we don't, and we, we rather tend to give it out to the person. The person uh, uh, is good for the person because the person is in higher position. Mm. And, uh, and 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 it's, it's an interesting thing that uh, sometimes you don't want to uh, link it to our traditional setting where, for instance, uh, you go to a place where the community might be living in a poor area, and then the one person who is the leader has been giving what a nice place yeah and you can and he's see content that, with it uh -huh, so and you can even see that when it comes to issues and uh, say oh uh, the way the leader is not nice let's go and add more forgetting that you know so these are some of the things that i think he's trying to yeah to and he goes into. on to say that hierarchy in an organization is seen as uh, reflecting inherent inequalities yes. centralization is popular Yes. Subordinates expect to be told what to do. Yes. And the ideal boss is a benevolent autocrat. Y yes. A and we see it quite in our society yeah. where we expect the peace meals. Yeah. So, oh, Mr. MP is here. When yeah. he comes, so you see, what you have said brings my mind to something that, uh, you know, we talk about science and technology being the, the, the bedrock of the nation. But, you know, science, I'm not a, a, a social scientist. Uh, but the work I do, we use a lot of social theories. Yeah. You see, science is not only the, the, the hardcore science. Social science is also... Uh, we, sometimes we, we, the theories are there for us to apply, but we tend to ignore the theories in many of the things that we do. So, for instance, what you have just said, you see, it's coming from a, a social science-based theory. Yeah. Do we actually... You know, it's, it's one of the reasons... We, when you read for that, it will tell you that is the reason why in our classroom setting... We tend to rather uh, teach students and they don't ask questions. And this is the reverse in the other. It's, it's, it's part of the. Uh, and you know, some teachers will make the classroom environment such that you cannot even ask the question. Mm. You, you get it. Uh -huh. So, uh, uh, the choice like uh, 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 this population uh, figure like this, that which is saying that every 40 years the population will double. It's a very important rule of thumb uh, that if you are guiding yourself to the future, you need to be able to work towards it. And that is why I went back to 1980 to look at our population then, which was our 11 million. And you could see that per the rule of thumb, we have eaten plus or minus. Yeah. Uh -huh. You see, so these are some of the things that the theories actually, uh, even whether science or social science, are able to help us to take decisions and, uh, and plan our economy well. And so we shouldn't just discuss the social science theories and always be talking about science and technology. Because after all, if you have all the science and technology, it, they are coming into a society. Mm. If the society are not ready for the, 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 the technology to work, it will still fail. Mm. You know? But could, could these uh, dimensions that we speak of about yeah. us yeah. as a people and our, our cultural uh, behavior, yeah. 
that does that says something about why we are underdeveloped yeah it's a, it's a, it's 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 part of the reason and this one you see the theory is linked to management mm. and he uh, he what he did was he studied across countries and tried to establish that after everything just like i've just said you can have all the science and technology it is management that will deliver the solution yes but because of our cultural aspects and the way we do things, it has made us to be able to find it difficult to apply the management principles. Mm -hmm. But if, see, if we are people and uh, we are not getting that kind of development we want, yeah. and we are living in mediocrity, uh, we, we still continue to praise, yes. uh, uh, sing praises for yes. political parties. Yeah. We are not demanding what yes. we are supposed to get. Yes. And so whenever you demand something that is good or you think about the future, yes. you get attacked based on uh, which political affiliation you belong yeah. to then we are our own uh, devil. Yeah, that's why uh, I think some time ago when I was here, I, I said uh, uh, there's one, sometimes to see language, the way you speak might be the way you are acting. Mm. This word, I beg, is something that we might have to revisit. Mm. You know, there are certain things that uh, you, you live in a place where the road is not good and you say you are begging the minister. Yeah. You don't beg the minister. You, you, you demand it, yeah. but in the, the legal way. Are you getting me? Yeah. Uh -huh. But you see, the, the theory is playing in there. That is why it means that before you are even asking for something that is your right, mm. you are seeing the minister per the theory yeah. as something, somebody who has to be worshipped. Like a demigod. Yes, yeah, so you are begging him. Yeah. Uh -huh. You see? So that is what some of that is. So that's what I'm saying that if you bring the theories down, mm. you can see that they are explaining some of the things that we do. Yes. Let me take you down to this one. Yeah. I'm interested in this one. Yeah. On long-term orientation. Yes. And he defines his Very way. beautiful. He describes how every society has to maintain some links Very with, beautiful. with its own past yes. while dealing with the challenges of the present future. Yeah. And societies prioritize these two existential goals differently. Yeah. Yeah. So normative societies, which call low on this dimension, for example, prefer yeah. Yeah. to maintain time-honored traditions yes. and norms yes. while viewing societal change with suspicion. Yeah. And this is the interesting part. Yeah. It says Ghana has uh, the in incredibly low score in this area yeah. of four yes. in this dimension. A score this low indicates a very strong preference to a normative way of thinking. Yeah. People in such societies have a strong concern with establishing the absolute truth. Yeah. They are normative in their thinking. Yes. They exhibit great respect for tradition, yeah. a relatively small propensity to save for the future yeah. and focus on achieving quick results. So we yes. don't focus on the future. As, uh, exactly. And, <laughs> and we don't focus went, on achieving quick results. Yes. That's who we are, yes. per his description. And if you, if you maybe I, I'm sure if you ask to recount you and go back to you, find that many of the things that we do are normally short term. Mm. We don't try to look at the far end. And I can give you examples. Yes. All uh, the dual la uh, uh, dual carriage roads yeah. in Kumasi at the moment, uh -huh. they all lead into a single lane. Uh -huh. And see. and you see the expansion we give yeah. to it. Yeah. And so you could clearly see that we are not projecting into yeah. the future. So, Why is it like yeah. that? So which means that, mm. th that's what uh, uh, the theory is trying to explain yeah. based on our uh, uh, thinking. You see, sometimes I, uh, as a society, you have gone through a human race, you have gone through certain things that sometimes it hurts, but you don't want to rely on those things. Because sometimes I ask myself, how come even every most of the countries suffered colonialism anyway? Mm. But how come that it is the black race that went into slavery? More or less. The Europeans, the Europeans took us as slaves. The Arabs took us as slaves. I mean, if you take the, 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 the races, you have got the Europeans, you have got Arabs, the Chinese are there, uh, uh, or let's say Asians, okay? Uh, yes, that's four. Then the black race, five. Why was it not the black race uh, enslaving another, but it is the other way? I mean, I, I think about those things. Mm. I don't know whether you think about it. I do, uh, uh -huh. sometimes. And uh, for, for, for you to uh, really, uh, how could you just be in your country and somebody came and they were able to take up the land and demarcate the land and we didn't say anything? Uh, you know, but you know, they were relying on Darwin's theory, which look at the races and say some races are more intelligent than yeah. others. Uh, by the time they were coming, is that they, true? They were coming, no, that's what I'm saying that 
whether it's true or not, yeah. it's about theories and whether the theory is working. Yes. Darwin's theory, they rely on it and through anthropology, they came. When they came to, you will say it is not true. But if it is not true, how were they able to convince you to take your land and rule over you? Mm. So, so those the, are practical questions. Yes. You see, so, so the big question, question that we should be asking right yeah, now, yeah. how do we ensure that... Yeah. Per your projection, yeah. 2060, when we have a 70 million population, yeah. how do we ensure we progress steadily up to that end? Very beautiful. And I think the NDPC PC have put us on the fo good footing now. I was, I'm even surprised that this document is not for national discussion now. Because I think that before the parties came out of their manifesto, mm. this document should have been in the public space. The public should have been educated for us to know what... We want we are projecting because that should serve as a template. Yes, for development. although it's mentioned in there that the parties are supposed to use this as their guide. Yeah. But the public, uh, I went to the website. I don't know how many people and the general public whether the NCC have gone down to explain this to them because there are some questions in there that by now we should be asking the the, the politicians. Mm. For instance, to achieve all these things, it means the economy must improve, as they are talking about per capita of uh, 50,000 US dollars. They say they will, we need to be able to uh, increase our tax revenue base. How are we going to do it? So by now, these political parties will be telling us. The document says 2057, we are going to get, how are you going to increase our revenue? I have in here, they want to uh, block leakages of outflows. How are they going to do it? I have here, how uh, resources for infrastructure. So maybe that is why here, maybe you will say one part. You say, how do you find resources for infrastructure? We ask the, part, the, 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 the parties because the blueprint is there. Mm. Now it's about how are you going to generate the money and other things for us all to get it. So that we put the questions to them. Uh, uh, they talk about PPP. How are you going to do it? You ask the, this government, well, how are you going to do it? They talk about having uh, dedicated bonds, uh, dedicated infrastructure, uh, pension funds, and they talk about land bonds. These are all things that they should be explaining to us as they are. They want to our power. Uh, they want our vote now, mm. and we have to be asking them wherever they go to. But uh, it has not come into the discussion at all, you know. So if you are asking me the should, way should forward, should this be this plan be mandatory, be made mandatory, and to serve as a template uh, so that whichever government, uh, you know, yeah, that's why they, they in, the, in the document the plan is there. But you know, because uh, parties will campaign on strategies, mm. the plan is there. Everybody, if you come and we are building houses, it means you will come and also what? Continue. But the most important thing is that if you listen to the Minister of Works and Housing yesterday, I don't know whether you're listening to him. No, I didn't. Well, anybody here? Because he was quite straightforward. That is about financial what? Muzzle. And that we haven't put, they haven't put anything, in terms, apart from redevelopment, we have not actually put anything in terms of housing. So, where are they going to use ingenuity or creativity to make, let us get those resources to achieve the target? Don't we have the resources already? Well, if you have are the... Are we not dissipating our own resources? Because no, what, we, uh, uh, each government talks about, oh, we have enough resources to do this. Yes. When I come, I'm yes. going to do this. I'm going to generate money from and, our And that is why we are not pushing them to tell us what is practicable and, and will take us forward. You know, because everybody is complaining about... Come, comes in and say you have a huge informal sector mm. and they are not I'm going uh, to group in the informal uh, sector. They are not contributing to that. Yeah. They come, the time will pass, mm. nothing is done. And at the same time, you have set up a document which says that you have to increase the revenue base. Mm. How are you going to increase it? So we need somebody who can come and give us a strategy. Mm. You know, that now this informal sector, this plan A, B, C, D, that I'm not going to take uh, tax from them to increase their revenue base. Mm. These are the things that I think we need uh, 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 going forward. And then uh, I think uh, as a citizens too, we need to now uh, be demanding in the legal way mm. from our uh, How governments. do we go the legal way? To demand what we, we we should be getting? Go to the courts? To compel them? Yeah, that, that could be and the civil society uh, groups are there. They, kn they know how to uh, assist. But the, the idea of uh, 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 begging, 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 I think maybe uh, that should be something that we should take it out of our, our vocabulary and, uh, and demand things that are right in that right. Way. Yeah, yeah. 
It's 8 o'clock now, and uh, we're still here on Love in the Morning. We'll be having some interesting discussion with Professor Divine Kweku Ahaji. Uh, my namesake, I'm also Kweku. Okay, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Head of Department, Centre for Settlement Settlements. Studies. You can now join the discussion. You can give us a call on 03 8359 And tell me, is Ghana ever going to attain the status of a developed country? You you listen to us, and you, you, you've heard who we are per somebody's theory and how we are developing at a snail pace. Is Ghana ever going to get there? How do we get there? Give me a call now, 03220 You can also drop a comment for me on our Facebook stream. It's live over there, and I'll be glad to read it. Yeah, uh, Paul Katinka, good morning. Yeah, good morning, brother. Yeah, you know, I think hmm, I like how the uh, the way the professor is talking. But in Ghana here, bro, hmm, now if you look, if you listen to what NDC people is promising, you know, it tells you clearly that we have the wrong people at 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 uh, at a, delic a delicate place. No place that is so fragile. We have wrong people there. Because the mission that we can carry to make a, a Ghana move forward because of the because of um what, uh, uh, because of their selfish interest, all those um uh, constitutional uh, you know amendment has been silent because. Open the constitution. What is in there? Let us make it work. Like our, our brother is saying that um, people go to um, a, um, a university and they, they learn theory. If you learn theory and you cannot bring it into practical, it's useless. So the lecturers, that is because uh, last night I was communicating with my, my junior brother uh, that I live with. He is at tech. In fact, I was asking him some questions and I was looking for some answers. And, and in fact, I, I can see clearly that the lectures over there, even the, 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 the um, um, your King George, good morning. Good morning, all. Let's hear you. Uh, my, my, my worry is that. We, we don't even have any person who can move Ghana here for us to be happy. That's my problem. When we come to about NDC, they have a problem of our development in Ghana here. When it comes to about MPP, we have a, the same problem. But I'm thinking that if we can even shift all of them or we choose another person to come and move Ghana here so that we can be happy to have those kind of development in Ghana here. For instance, uh, MPP come, the Mahama has done so many projects and they have to continue. They will not do it. When Kufo is in power, Kufo also does the same thing. And then these NDC people come, they do not even continue. That is the problem we have in Ghana here. I came back on Friday from Accra to Kumase. There is no gun, uh, there is no government who are even maybe making projects that we are going to do a dual lane college from Accra to Kumasi. This road has been there for so many years. When we are thinking about maybe doing this project, or we, we have to do certain things, we can even make this Ghana to even prolong, or maybe something like, I don't even have to say it. It's very, very annoying. What, what's the way forward? My brother, because Can judge, what's the way forward? Whether you are in Ghana here or not, we are not seeing anything. We are politics, politics and everything have been killing this guy, this country. We have to do policy. When you come, this is what you have to do. When you do it, that is okay. But if it's about politics and party politics, Ghana will remain the same thing. All right. That's my answer. Thank you very much, uh, King George. And uh, let, let me go to the next uh, caller. Kwekudia, good morning. Hello, good morning. Let's yes, hear you. Uh, thank you for having me on. I think your show this morning has very excellent. 
And uh, what I have to say is that there are two people who are very important to our national development. One is uh, honest people like your guests too. They should be very honest and continue to be very honest in their discussions. When people on NBC saying something, they should be bold enough to say that this will work. This will work. I listened to his uh, commentary on the housing project uh, after the NBC manifesto comparing the NPP and NBC. From my opinion, he was just politically correct because clearly one ought to be better than the other. But he wouldn't say because he wants to be politically correct. I can understand. Well, but there are... <laughs> I, 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 I do not see it that way. But Fine. Um... I... Uh, he, he, I, I, do we have the same problem with yeah. the affordable housing yeah. units? Yeah. Yeah. We have the same problem because the, w the ones that NPP uh, set out to do, they are, they are still there at the yeah. same stage. The yeah. one that NDC started to do, they are still yeah. there at the same no. stage. Yeah. All no, of I'm them talking, are I'm not affordable to the people. Yeah. No, I'm saying I'm talking about the policy in the present manifestos. Hello. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes, and he was, I, from my opinion, he wanted to be politically correct at the expense of seeing X looks better than Y. Do you understand? Yes, I know. Yeah, uh, they, 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 they both well. parties proposed a solution that in the short term could work. Mm -hmm. You know, So that's why uh, uh, you cannot say this is not good or this is not uh, good because they all okay. have uh, a role to play. But that's why okay. I suggested that. At the, at, the, at the long uh, bottom line is that we need to focus on uh, increasing the housing supply, just like Malaysia is building about 800,000. And so these 1,500 things are not the solution, mm. you know. But those, that one was just for a short-term uh, measure. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's an, it, it, it's an, uh, your, your briefing was excellent. And if I can move to the second issue. The second issue is with journalists. Our journalists like pre-singing so much. Instead of asking hard questions, even sometimes you have Fox News interviewing Trump, and the questions they are asking him, Trump gets angry. But what do we have here? If you are affiliated to my party, I would like to ask you, let's say, soft questions. The vice president is in uh, Kumasi at the moment. All the journalists are doing is praising him. Nobody is asking him, asking him, fact checking whatsoever he's saying. Anyway. So if <laughs> the politician realizes that this is what Ghana wants, of course, you go about seeing all manner of things. Okay, Kwaku, thank you very much uh, for uh, your call. Uh, a lot goes into, <laughs> uh, you know, these interviews mm -hmm. and how they are selected, how those stations are selected, and yeah. uh, what questions you have to ask. Anyway, Alex, good morning. Good morning. Let's hear you. Yeah, um, you see, in Ghana, we have a lot of issues. Some of these issues, is because of the people in the country. We, we we have a lot of people in this country who respect authority to the point that even when it is wrong, when the leader is wrong, everybody will tell you that you, you can't say it. When you say it, you'll be called aside and then you'll be told to keep quiet. Oh, I know what you are saying is true, but I mean, you let let it pass. These are some of the things that has entered into our political space. And it is killing the, the, the country. You see, when you talk about things that are not going on well in the country, you'll be vilified, you'll be threatened, and all sorts of things will be done to you. But I think it's high time the middle class people in this country stand up and speak for, for, for the vulnerable in the society. But you see, one other aspect of it is uh, some people, they will have the good hearts. Just like our president uh, portrayed to us before he became the president. We all felt that he, he had the heart to, to change the country. But when he ascended the throne, me personally, some of the things that he has done, I see that you see, the, the leader's self-interest will now fight the cause of the leader. He wants second term. He wants the good of the country. But somebody somewhere wants him to do things in a certain way before he can get the second term. So what do you think will happen? 
Thank you very Other much. people are good, but when they get the opportunity, the, the system will change them. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for your call. Kofi, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Uh, how are you? By his grace. Yo. Is the professor suggesting what it will take for Ghana to be developed in the next city yet? Or he's just making... Uh, he did. He's Maybe you are not listening. He did. No, you see, when I listened to your intro, it was like you are you were asking questions. The professor is asking, "Will Ghana be developed in the?" I next was asking that question. Are you were asking? Yes. Oh, all right. <laughs> the right. show so, was asking that question. I needed your input. So once you are online, tell me, will we ever yes, get there? He, what he, will make us get there? With politicians, all things are possible. If only they have the will power to do it. Kwame Nkrumah decided to do a uh, Temamoto way. He decided to make Tema Township, Tema Habo, Akosumbo Habo. He faced opposition, yet he said, I will do it. And he was able to do it. As we speak, Akufuado has been able to provide. To, to supply Ghana, the whole Ghana, free water for almost one year. Free. Nobody is paying a dam. And he has been able to do it. So it tells you that if the politicians decide that they will do it, if they can put away their parochial individual interest aside and decide that I want to do something for my mother country, they will do it. They can do it, and all things are possible with politicians, except that they always think of their parochial interest, and that is what is hindering our uh, development. Mm. And so what I want to suggest is that, like Prof was saying, the National Planning Committee, whatever they plan, it should be factored into, uh, 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 it should be put into law. Parliament should make a law to ban whatever president or whatever government that may come, so that you you implement it. You will not bring any new thing. You implement it until it is finished. Then we bring another plan. Thank you very much, Kofi Edmond. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Let's hear you. Um, my my suggestion is that I think Ghana we need a body or let's say an institution that will take care of the development of the country rather than giving it to these politicians because everybody has their or a plan and when they come to power they do what they think is right and sometimes it doesn't go well for the citizens of the of the country that so would I be ceding the the power of uh, the president to an autonomous uh, institution is that what you're suggesting Yes, I think it should be given to a body. Which what would be the role of the president? The president should just um, see to the affairs of the state and the development of the country is what I'm talking about. For for instance, the infrastructure development, as in the construction of roads, schools, and those things, it shouldn't be given to these policy because they come and play with their minds and they get away with it because every four years they come and they promise so many things. People also buy into it. I think it should be given to, but just like the previous collab said. Mm. Thank you very much uh, for your call, Edmond. Well, I can pick a last call and that will be it. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Mrs. Amankwa, I'm happy you called. Women don't call this. Same here. You don't pick my calls. Oh really? Yes. I, I don't. I don't know. Is you seriously? The line it gets hot every time. But I'm grateful you are here. Uh, let's yeah. hear you. I am going to touch on the question uh, from the professor about why the black race. Do you remember that question? Why <laughs> are we? Enslaved? Go ahead. And I listen that to the scripture, the three sons of Noah. Uh, you know the story about that. When you got drunk and blah, blah, blah. I don't want to go into details, but I want to center on the curse the father um, imposed on the son. Said, curse became, you will be enslaved 
to his brethren, that is to Shem and Japheth. So, Ham, for me, when I read the scripture, that particular part, I liken it to us, the black race. Sometimes you see politicians and uh, the citizens, they try, as much as they try to do something positive, you see some of us trying to pull them down. We get them frustrated and they give up. But they themselves, do they have the willpower to do it? Because if you have the willpower to do it... They live among us, Rastus. And sometimes you are so pressed, hard pressed, that somebody made a, a comment that you know that what is going on is wrong. When you talk about it, they'll, they'll, they'll take it somewhere and say, oh, you know, we know this one is not right, but what they are coming to. Can you imagine? And so... That case is there, but we have to work extra, extra hard. There's anyway. no way we can break it. Thank you very much. Um, mm. I'm grateful. We also do and pray. I'm grateful uh, for your time this morning, Mrs. Amankwa. Thank you very much. But uh, if you have the will, power, uh, Prof, uh, to do something, mm -hmm. definitely you do it. Yes. And, and, and no matter the criticism and all that, you, you manage it and you still go ahead and do it. Yeah. I can give you two examples. Um, the late um, uh, Utunfo's brother, I've forgotten the name. <laughs> you see, who died recently. Uh -huh. And he, Okunko, uh -huh. he wanted to do something. At that time, no matter the criticism, he would still do it. Yeah. Even at the threat of uh, killing him, yeah. he still went ahead to do what he wanted to do. Yeah. Uh, when we were going to build this central market project, I remember the protests, mm. serious protests. Mm. People invoking curses yes. with eggs and all that. Yeah. One morning, uh, the, the mayor at the time, Kojobo, decided to uh, uh, you know, put military men around the whole thing and went ahead and did it. Yeah. And now we are enjoying the edifice. Yeah. Uh, so if you really want to do it, mm. why not? You yeah. can go ahead and do it. Mm. So what are we going to do? Mm. Uh, to ensure that going forward, the, the role of the people and the role of politicians, to ensure yeah. that we get to where we want to go. Okay, uh, okay thank you very much. And uh, that was uh, some interesting uh, inputs from your listeners. Yeah, you know, that's why I'm saying that now we are even lucky, this uh, NDPC document, mm. I think that they have to descend to the ground. Mm. for the public to be aware of the document and maybe NCC should partner and for everybody to understand this vision that they are talking about. The caller, one of the callers made a fantastic uh, submission. Why don't we make it compulsory, mandatory, something like a template? Yeah. So you do not have any choice but to go by it, by law. Yeah, okay. So that is the, that one there for the, uh, our legislature to take care of. Mm. But the people have to buy into it mm. to understand even that now we have this document, which is Ghana. Because mm. it's an interesting catch. Ghana at 100, uh, that is 100 years. We are going to celebrate 100 years of independence, 19, 2057. Mm. And we say we want Ghana to become a developed country. But we don't know about it. Let the people know about it. And then it should become the national discourse from now as we are getting to the elections. So that once we all buy into it, we all make sure that, uh, uh, and uh, like what you said, you know, stakeholder involvement is very, very important in this. And I think maybe this is a time that the NCC will have to be given a very bigger role, you know, in terms of the role they can play in helping us to achieve uh, this vision. Thank you very much uh, for your time yeah. uh, this morning, Prof. And I hope we'll get another time to Thank think you. about yeah, Ghana. That's right. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, right. uh, Professor Divine Haji is held, head of uh, Settlement Studies, Kwame Nkoma University of Science and Technology. Some of you sent some messages to our Facebook page, our live stream. Mm -hmm. By G says, uh, like every piece of gold can be converted to an ornament. Every piece of iron can be converted to a sharp sword. Same goes with any country and its countrymen. If the constitution of the land is built... Uh, built, safeguarded, and practiced in the best interest of current and future generations, then no matter what, that country will definitely be developed and prosperous. A.K. Samkobi says, unless we change our ways of doing things as citizens and leaders, we can never get there. For instance, we live in a country uh, where our leaders waste lands doing other things instead of continuing same uncompleted projects they came to meet. Citizens, too, never stop politicizing everything that happened 
in the country. Selfish leadership and so on. Indeed, it's very hard. Dr. Down Blue says um, voting for Nana Kufadu in December 7th, 2020 is a serious crime against humanity. Well, uh, justice and coexistence. I, I, I wonder how that. Anyway, I have already made up my mind to vote against him. Well, that's your opinion. Akrokari Junior Tiero says, from Junior Tiero, shut out the whole Ghana. Akrokari, come December 7th, I and my family will vote massively for Nana Adodanko Akufu and Honorable Philip Ufuri Asante. Okay, positive change. Medina says, the people's power cannot be taken by some few greedy people in this Akufu Adu government. We need a change, and that change must come at all costs. I think it's turned into some campaign now. Yeah. <laughs> Honorable Abedi Kwadaso uh, Kumasi says, enjoying live and clear at Big Joe Shoes near Kwadaso Onion Market. Thank you very much uh, for all your uh, contributions and thank you very much uh, for joining us. I will say this and this music spells it out clearly for us. Asam <laughs> Paetia. Obayan Safusu or Bunibia one can assam. They mafu to some cacrewa supreme. Yo, Kofi, oh my, a woman, oh money, a mamma. Then you baby are caught, what are that? I am worrying. Bonsom, bonsom, one in the pa, as I dip out Currently on the Super Morning Show, we are talking about uh, protection for the MPs.